Hello and welcome to my guide on creating a simple yet artistic lava shader graph. For those who only want to see how the nodes are set up, here's a small scroll preview of how the shader will be done. If you are still around, then I'll assume that you'd like to see a more in-depth tutorial on how to create such a graph. You can use the timestamps in the description below to find what portion of the video you actually need. One of the biggest hurdles for the project is setting up the project to use the correct render pipeline. With this particular shader, the universal render pipeline or the high definition render pipeline will work just fine. You'll need to make sure your project is set up with one of these pipelines, which if you're in the bare bones project, you'll need to go to window, package manager, then install your choice of render pipeline. I'll be using the URP or universal render pipeline in my example. Now that you have the pipeline installed, you'll need to create the render asset, which can be done by right clicking, create, Rendering, Universal Pipeline Renderer, Pipeline Asset, the Forward Renderer. This could also work in the 2D Experimental Renderer Asset, but I'll be using the Standard Forward Renderer. I'm sure the project is using the correct renderer, go to the Edit, Project Settings, Graphics tab, then drag and drop or select from the menu the Renderer Pipeline Asset into the Pipeline Asset slot. This will enable you into using the basics of shaders, but this is not an exhaustive instruction on renders or shaders. There are many possibilities for customizations that you can learn from documentation or further research. So with all the boring stuff out of the way, let's get into the fun part. Now it is time to dive into creating the shader graph. I will store my example in a folder called how to video. This is not important, but I would like to try to keep my workspace clean. To create the shader, Right mouse click, create, shader, and now you can select between a few options. I'll be using the physically based rendering or PBR graph, since I will be using HDR colors, which is the high dynamic range. And since uh, they have the higher range of luminosity, it just looks better for like lighting purposes. You can use the unlit shader or the 2D renderer lit or unlit, and it could also work, but you wouldn't have the luminosity to it. I will point out the main differences once we look at the graph. If you want to utilize lighting information in your shaders, the PBR graph is the way to go. And what we're going to do is name it lava. We now need to associate the shader to a material. The reason we do this is a shader is the math which manipulates what a pixel should look like on screen based on the material and lighting configurations. The easiest way to create an associated material for a shader is by right mouse clicking on the newly created shader graph asset, create, and then select material. I'm just gonna name it lava material, double click our shader graph asset. When initially creating the shader, I had a few things I wanted to accomplish. The first item on the list was I wanted to make sure the graph was simple, which meant no complex logic and just kept the basic nodes. And secondly, I wanted to make sure the shader was easily adjustable via the inspector. And lastly, I wanted to make a shader that represented lava, but in a very stylistic and appealing way. Now that we have a goal in mind, let's start building the graph. The first piece of this puzzle will be constructing the procedurally generated look. I will create a Veroni node by pressing spacebar and searching for Veroni. This node generates random noise based on an angle offset and cell density. This has another name in the math field called Wardley noise. The general idea is to create a pseudo random noise spaced out by a grid like structure. In this example, you can see if I set the angle to zero and the cell density to five, I get a perfect five by five grid structure. I want to easily control the angle and cell density. So let's make two vector one properties in our blackboard. The first will be labeled Voronoi angle and the second will be Voronoi density. Drag these out and plug them into the appropriate slots. This particular node is creating a nice sharp layer that looks like almost like rock. Now I want to create a layer that looks more fluid and cloudy to give our shader a little more flair. I'm going to create a gradient noise node now, which should result in the cloudy effect that I'm looking for. Gradient noise generates a peeling white noise of values between 0 and 1. The scale input is the value we want to control via the inspector. So let's create a new vector one property on the blackboard. I'm going to call it gradient noise scale. We can now mess with these values of the noise nodes to get the look we desire. 
One nifty feature that Shader Graph has is that we can group selected nodes together and give it a title to help organize our graph. Left mouse click and drag your mouse over the nodes that control the noise creation. If you miss a node with this method, just hold down control and left mouse click the missed nodes. With all the needed nodes highlighted, just right mouse click and then select group selection. It'll ask for a name, which I'll call it shape generation. A lava shader would be pretty boring if there was no movement to the texture. So let's create a UV movement. UVs are just texture coordinates that correspond to the vertex information of the geometry the shader is applied to, which we can access and manipulate. A node that you'll be become very familiar with if you continue with shaders is the tiling and offset node. It does exactly what the name implies. You can tile or repeat the UV or offset it. Offsetting the UV is what we are after since offsetting just means moving the object. Plug the output of the tiling and offset node into the UV input of the Voronoi noise node. Uh, you can adjust the offset values and notice the preview on the noise node and shifting around. So how do we get the UV to shift smoothly over time? Luckily for us, there is a time node. This has multiple options such as just time, sine time, cosine time, and a couple others. Sine and cosine are oscillating time frames that bounce between negative one and one in a wave shape. Uh, in our case, we'll utilize just the standard time output. Since the value is constant, we need a way to control the rate of this time. The best way to control this is by multiplying our constant time value by a vector two property. The reason we're using a vector two is because the offset input for the tiling and offset node has an input of two values, an X and a Y. So make a vector two property on the blackboard and I'm going to call it layer one speed. Drag this property into the workspace, create a multiply node and connect the layer one speed property and the output of time into it. Take the output of the multiply node and attach it to the input of the tiling and offset node. Adjusting the X value of the layer one speed property will result in the horizontal shifting of the UV to change and the Y value will, will result in a vertical UV shift to change. Group these UV movement nodes, which will let us do another neat trick in shader graph. Now, if we highlight this newly created group by left mouse clicking, we can right mouse click and duplicate this series of nodes. We can connect this duplicated UV movement group to the gradient noise. And one thing we need to modify on this new UV movement group is the layer one speed property. We'll create a new vector two property in the blackboard and call it layer two speed. This will replace the layer one speed property. And this gives us the ability to control both noise speeds independently. There are a few options here to get a nice looking result. But the particular route I want to take is creating an outline feature that uses the emissions to give that cool glowy effect. So let's multiply the outputs of both noises together. This blends the noise nodes together, giving us a cool scrolling effect. Using the output of this multiply, we can create the outline effect I spoke of earlier. To achieve this, we'll use the step node. Uh, this accepts an edge, which will be the output of our multiply and it also has an input called in. The step node checks the values of all the pixels and based on the in value, we'll convert the pixel value to either a one or a zero. Using this to our advantage, we need to create two step nodes and feed our output of the multiply into the edge input. We can now have two of the same shapes, but at varying sizes. So let us create two vector one properties. I'm gonna name them outline one size and outline two size. Plug each property into one of the step nodes in input slot. We need to subtract the smaller step shape from the larger step shape. This is achieved by the subtract node. This does exactly what it says and it subtracts the two given inputs. Plug the larger step into slot A of the subtract node and then the smaller step shape into the B slot. The preview should show an outline effect. To make the outline pop a little bit more, I want to give it a color, and in this case, an HDR color, to give it some luminosity. To conquer the effect, we need to multiply our outline shape by a color property. So create a color property in the blackboard, and this one I'll call outline color. Now multiply this color property with the output of the subtract node, 
and you'll see the outline shape is now colored with our property color selection. Group these nodes, which I'll call uh, outline shape generation. Finally, we are nearing the final steps of the shader graph. I want to control both layers of noise to have their own color. So that means creating two more color properties in the blackboard, which I will call layer one color and layer two color. We need to create a multiply node near the Voronoi node, connect the noise output to the multiply node, and then connect our layer one property to the other input of the multiply. We will repeat this process for the gradient noise node as well, but use our layer two color property. You can group these color multiplications and call them layer one color and layer two color respectively for further organization. We have three separate layers of oh, unique yeah. values now that we need to combine to get our desired effect. There are a few options to do this, but I'll utilize the add node. This just adds the values of the input from the node together. Watching a tutorial on different blend modes in Photoshop or GIMP may help you visualize what the math nodes such as multiply, add, or subtract are actually doing when it comes to combining color values. Now add the outputs of the layer one multiply and the output of the outline multiply. It does not matter which input these are plugged into since it's just adding the values together. Now take the output of this add and add it into another add node along with the output of the layer two multiply. The preview of this last node should be the look we are going for. So group these add nodes together and call it add all layers together. The final step of the graph is to take the output of this add node and connect it to the albedo and the emission of the PBR master. Save the asset in the top left hand corner and the shader should be done. I have a scene set up with a cube, a quad and a sphere. Let us apply our lava material to these objects and see how it works. The great thing about the properties we created in the blackboard uh, that we also exposed make it very easy to adjust the shader at runtime, which gives us the ability to make it look exactly how we want. I wanna thank you for watching and I hope you learned a lot from the video. If you did, please consider liking and also subscribing to the channel for more game development content such as this. But anyways, I hope you stay safe and take care.